Just like the way customers come to our shop, we give them goods on credit, but later they return them maybe because the goods are expired or something. It's the same way you we can be in our own business. We go to our, approach our suppliers. We buy goods from them on credit. But after some time, maybe because of some reason, we decide to return these goods. When we return goods we had earlier bought with the purpose of reselling them, we consider these purchases returns or call them returns outwards. When returns outwards happen, there is a special journal where we record them. And this special journal is what we call the purchase returns journal or call it the purchase returns day book. Or you can call it the returns outwards day book or the returns outwards journal. In today's session, we are going to look at how we post items in the returns outwards journal or call it the purchases returns day book. I'm going to also show you the double entry that is relating to purchases returns or returns outwards. And we'll get started right now. A few things that I would like to explain. Notable here is the source document that we are going to use when we are posting transactions in the purchases returns day book. Here is the narrative of this whole purchases returns thing. You own a business. You go to your supplier. You get goods from them on credit. When you get goods from them on credit, they become a creditor to the business because they've given you goods on credit. So a creditor is a liability. So you'll go ahead and open up the supplier's account. You could call them creditor supplier. And then because they are a liability to the business, you go ahead and credit their account. Now, when you discover later on that maybe one some of the goods that were supplied to you were defunct or expired, and then you choose to uh, re uh, return those goods to your supplier, that is what we, we call a returns outwards or a purchase return. When you return that good back to the supplier, it means that your earlier recordings, the, the supplier's account is going to reduce or the account balance of your supplier in your books is going to reduce. So if upon those goods coming into your business, you had credited the supplier's account, it means this time round, as you are returning these goods to your supplier, you're going to go ahead and do the reverse entry. In, in this case, you're going to go ahead and debit the supplier's account with the amount of goods that you are returning. When you debit the supplier's account or call it the creditor's account, you accompany that with a document we are going to call the debit note. This debit note is simply informing your supplier that, hey, your account has been reduced or your account has been debited by this amount of money or by so much. So the debit note happens to be our source document when we are dealing with purchases returns. So that is why on your screen you are seeing a column for note number. That column for note number is where we are going to write the number of the, 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 the number of the document, the source document that we are basing on to record into this journal. So let's get into the worked example. Here, this, the thing says the transactions below relate to the purchases, returns, or returns outwards at Kabuleta Enterprises. Now, from there, you are able to see the date, the supplier name, the note number, and the amount. We are required to post the transactions in the purchases, returns, or the returns outwards day book. Now, the word day book and the word journal, I'm, I'll be using those words interchangeably, but they mean the same thing. It's the same thing when I say returns outwards or purchases returns. Those two means the same thing. I'll be using them interchangeably. So let's get right into the first transaction. Now, the first transaction says on 2020, Lasuba was a supplier who supplied us. However, we returned goods worth 560000 to him. And the note number is, as you're seeing on your screen, so we are going to post it. It's very easy. We will write the date that on, two, on 2nd October 2020, the details are that our supplier is Lasuba. Um, note number 922, we we're going to go ahead and write the amount of goods we are returning, which is 560,000. So 
That is the, just like the way we've been doing before. That is how we record in the purchases returns daybook. So from there, uh, remember Lasuba was our supplier and because he had supplied us goods on credit, it means that his account is going to be found in the purchases ledger. And in the purchases ledger, he's definitely a creditor. Because we have returned goods to him on credit, it means that we are going to go ahead and reduce his account balance. Reducing his account balance means that we are going to go ahead and debit his account in the purchases ledger. Remember, creditor Lasuba account, or call it the supplier's account, this is a liability to the business. Increases in liabilities are credited. If the liability is reducing, it means we are going to go ahead and debit, and this is exactly what we are doing here. So we shall go ahead and debit his account by 560,000. The other item affected is returns outwards or purchases returns. This so happens to be in the returns outwards the book on page one of that book, and it happened on that date. So this is pretty much how we are going to deal with each and every individual returns outwards that we are going to do. We first write it in the journal, and then we shall go ahead and make the corresponding debit entry in, on, on the corresponding supplier's account in the purchases ledger. So that's how we are going to go and do the second transaction. Uh, the second transaction being uh, on 10th Abitegeka. Uh, Abitegeka, we return goods to him. The note number is 9 slash 23, and definitely the amount is 1,640,000. That is how much we return. So we shall go to the supplier Abitegeka account in the purchases ledger. Then we'll go ahead and debit his account to show that we have reduced it by 1,640,000. The other item affected is returns outwards, which is in returns outwards book on that date and now we know that creditor abitidica account is on page two so it means we shall go back to the returns outwards the book and we reference we write in the folio column and say that abitidica's account is found in the purchases ledger on page two that's what we mean by pl2 we shall go ahead and do the same thing with the third transaction this is aisha on the 15th we had our supplier aisha we wrote a, a, uh, we returned goods worth 220,000 back to her. Of course, the note number here is 9 slash 24, and that is the amount we, of goods we returned. So we are going to go to the purchases ledger on Aisha's account, creditor Aisha. We debit his account with 220,000. The other item affected is returns outwards, which is on that on red, in, in the returns outwards, the book on page one, and that is happening on that date then definitely creditor Aisha account is on page three so we shall come to the folio column here and reference it as page three that PL3 purchases ledger page three then finally on that final transaction we shall say on Nareba was also another supplier just like we've been doing before we shall record that on that date Nareba was uh, gave us goods but on that day we returned goods to Nareba the note, the note number, the, the source document, that is the debit note number is 9 slash 25. The amount is worth 1,100,000. Those are the amount of goods we returned. And uh, definitely we shall go to the purchases ledger and uh, we shall go to the credit and Areba account and debit his account with 1,100,000. The other item affected is the returns outwards, which so happens to be on the returns outwards. Um, the book on page one and which took place on that date so we shall come back here and reference it and we say Nareba's account can be found on purchases ledger on page four so at the end of the month or oh, uh, we go ahead and add up the total returns outwards or the total purchases returns now take note we have been we, we have been uh, reducing the accounts of these suppliers in the purchases ledger we went to lasuba account abidegeka account aisha account and nareba account all these accounts because we are returning goods to these suppliers we have we have gone ahead to debit their accounts we have debited them to in the purchases ledger now what happens to the corresponding credit entry the corresponding credit entry 
is a block figure or the summation of all these purchases returns and it is posted as a total as a summation of all these on the credit side of the returns outwards account and we find these returns outwards account in the general ledger so that's what we're going to do so first of all we are going to go ahead and add up the total purchases returns which so happens to be three million five hundred and twenty thousand and we know that total is the total returns outwards to be transferred to the returns outwards account and that is exactly what we shall go and do we shall transfer that total to the returns outwards account found in the general ledger we'll go ahead and do complete the double entry by crediting that account with the total which is three million five hundred and twenty thousand of course in the details section we shall describe that this figure so happens to be the total returns outwards for the month it's found in the returns outwards step book on page one and it took place on that date like this video if you like it be sure to subscribe if you've not yet subscribed check out other accounting lectures on the channel my name is Anurudranga Kuramia and this is Kisembo Academy catch you next time